Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves 3. This is me, so this isn't going to be the end of the series. Uh, I'm going to continue this thing through, but it might be the last video on Rule the Waves 3 for a little bit. Um, I want to get to some other stuff as well, and I, frankly I've been out of town and busy a little bit. Uh, but generally speaking, I do want to get to some other things, so... We'll continue the series, but we'll we'll mix other things in more frequently, and uh, and rule the waves will kind of take uh, an alternating or backseat to some other priorities. Uh, but it'll still be in the mix, probably at least once a week, uh, once I get back to posting daily, which I haven't been good at lately. But in any event, uh, this is our rule the waves three let's play series playing as Italy. It is 1905 in our game currently. Uh, we have been at war with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. For eight months now, we are winning this war uh, pretty convincingly from a victory point perspective, 9,700 to 4,900. The unrest level is manageable. Uh, we are allied to Russia, which is helping. We are not blockaded for the moment, although that has kind of come and gone. Uh, the Austro-Hungarians have 10 pre-dreadnought battleships. We have seven. I don't see any indication that they are building any dreadnoughts the british are the british are building four dreadnoughts the austro-hungarians are building pre-dreadnoughts still i think the french look like they're building three as well so that's something to be aware of the russians are not building any probably because they can't afford anything because they've got 28 pre-dreadnought battleships the germans have 23 pre-dreadnoughts building five the americans are building one dreadnought the Japanese are not building any, and the Spanish are not building any. So it looks like it's, uh, what was that, just, is it? It's the Americans, French, and British who are obviously ahead in tech, uh, and we are building two pre-dreadnoughts right now. Our uh, budget at the moment, um, we're okay. We're barely above, above even here. Uh, we have several ships that are halted because we can't afford to build everything we're building. Three armored cruisers are halted. Um... One is being built, and then we've got two pre-dreadnoughts that are about a year away. Uh, we also have some ships that uh, recently completed, so we've got several destroyers which are working up uh, and whatnot. Uh, we looked at the, the Almanac already, but the Austro-Hungarians, slightly larger battleship fleet. Um, well, I guess a considerably larger, but they're small numbers, so they're manageable. Seven versus ten. Uh, armored cruisers, we have the advantage. Eight versus seven. Uh, we have the advantage in light cruisers. Eight versus three. They have the advantage in destroyers, 20, 26 versus 41. And uh, they have 27 Corvettes. Dear Lord, I only have six. Uh, submarines, they have seven. We've sunk a few. They've built a few new ones. We're building 12. I don't know if any of those are going to come online before the war ends. It is nine more months. Um, and our goal in this war, because Austria-Hungary Austria doesn't really have a big empire or anything, at least that we can take in this game. They've got a core province, and they've got... Dalmatia. Dalmatia is the only thing we can take from them. You can't take the core province, but I would be happy to take Dalmatia. It would basically turn not entirely because I think Pola would remain, which is weird because it technically is part of Dalmatia, I think. Uh, but Pola and Flume would remain uh, Austrian, uh, but we would get Zara, Splatio, I think Catero, um, and Zara. And uh, Zaro, Katero, Splattero, Katero. Oh my God, I can't pronounce these words. And then we also already have Albania. We took that uh, from a neutral nation a while back. Uh, and so that would really basically turn the Adriatic mostly into a uh, Italian lake, uh, which would be pretty cool. Uh, it would help our economy a little bit as well. Uh, nobody else is close to going to war to with us right now, so that's good news. Um, you know, we've, we've played this series and, and gotten stuck in really bad political situations where we've been on the ropes in most of these wars uh, or in most of the, yeah, in most of these wars, but it seems like things politically are in better shape right now. Um, so without further ado, let's move to the next turn and see what happens. All right. We got a cruiser action Southeast of the boot. So let's see, let's go ahead and fight this thing. Let's see what we bring some ships from our Russian allies have joined the fight. Hell yeah, brother. Give me an advantage. All right, so what do we got here? We got two armored cruisers, the Roma, Romeo and the Rosaria. I believe that's a Russian one. Four seven-inch guns, eight six-inch, 12 three-inch, four-inch belt armor. Okay. And she makes 19 knots. 
our armored cruiser. Wow, just look at the size discrepancy. That's pretty sweet. Uh, just seeing these two things side by side, the, the little mini armored cruiser of the Russians, and then we've got the uh, the Roma Romeo, uh, which is uh, a different different group here. Um, of the that are PC class, I believe twelve thousand three hundred tons. These are our newer armored cruiser class. Well, the Ro Romeo is kind of newer, uh, but we've got two of those. So we've got what three armored cruisers, two light cruisers, and six dis or five destroyers by the looks of it, plus something off here to the right. A couple of armored cruisers off here to the right. These are smaller Italian armored cruisers. Uh, the Marco Polo and Amerigo Vespucci of the Palistro class, which they say 1904, those are rebuilds. Those are much older ships uh, from the 1890s. Still, they're in a fleet, and uh, maybe we can cripple whatever the Austrians have. No objectives, so this is just running into the Austrians. All right, so we are going to close with them, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and max minus 2. That's 17 knots. Max minus 2. That's 20, but we're going to slow it to 17 to keep everybody in uni unit unity. Everybody in unison. And then we'll send the uh, light cruisers at 20 knots out to investigate. I don't think I can order the Marco Polo class. I, I don't think it lets me control these. They're not technically part of the formation in this battle. They're part of our coastal force or part of our support force which is under ai control very strange that like i'm in a limited chain of command despite the fact that the game says hey you're the secretary of the navy but not really in war you're kind of like the fleet admiral but maybe like a four star where there's some other chain of commands that are outside your chain of command sort of anyway uh, hopefully those other armored cruisers which are not in our chain of command come to our aid all right another enemy ship spotted so we've got two enemy ships spotted twenty nine thousand yard daylight savings uh daylight savings daylight sighting range it's uh, six in the morning so got a good long day ahead of us more ships now remember the austro-hungarians have a lot more destroyers than we do but we do have a slight advantage in terms of armored cruisers. And given that we also have a Russian armored cruiser fighting with us, uh, we may have an advantage. Let's move this a little bit faster. Let's close. All right. We've also started unlock. Oh, God. Let's just hope they don't have any battleships here because this is a, a larger fleet than I expected to be running into. Also, where, where are you going, light, light cruiser? I thought I ordered you over this way. And uh, Rosaria, you also come up here. Can I really not command these guys? For fuck's sake. So uh, I basically got three armored cruisers under my command. We can see the enemy has at least four, plus a light cruiser, a screen of destroyers, two light cruisers. All right, so they've got one, two. Is this a destroyer or a light cruiser? It says Corvette. I'm assuming it's a destroyer. So one, two, three, four, five destroyers by the looks of it, two light cruisers, and three armored cruisers. The Minerva class is of 9,600 tons. She is weird. She has big guns, so if she hits, she's going to do a lot of damage, 10-inch guns, but only two of them. And 14 6-inchers, so don't get into that intermediate range. The Stair class has two 8-inches and 10 6-inches, also 20 knots. Uh, and uh, that's what the other two are. All right, so we're going to sail the armored cruisers up this way. And kind of just slide into a battle line formation, perhaps. At least with the ships I can command. I'm ordering my light cruisers to come back. I don't think we're opening fire yet. So we're still trying to close the distance. Oh, no, we are. There, there we go. Fire is opened, so we're going to turn away. And let's get the uh, Russians in here faster, because they've got a little bit shorter range with their 7-inch guns. Want them to catch up to the uh, main fight here. All right. Max speed for the light cruisers. I want to get them to catch up. Destroyers, I'm thinking about cutting them out ahead of my armored cruisers and maybe launching a torpedo attack. The enemy armored cruisers are kind of out here on their own and seems like we are the main focus for the enemy gunnery. Already taken five hits on our lead armored cruiser. 
two on the secondary one, some flotation damage. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the destroyers over, and we are going to order them to squadron max and cut across the formation, and hopefully they will take some of the pressure off our armored cruisers. The enemy seems to be sailing at a faster speed. I'm sailing at a speed that I think will make for better gunnery, but the enemy is sailing at a speed that is, is faster than me, obviously, so that's playing playing a role in this here. So, interesting enough that there's four medium hits with a, quite a bit of flotation damage on the Romeo, but the Vetter is not suffering that damage. Also, come on, guys. AI armored cruisers, come up and help. All right, our light cruisers are going to turn this way. So our destroyers are charging in. The enemy's turning away. So my light cruisers are going to turn here in case the enemy turns south. And the armored cruisers are going to swing north to perhaps engage the Jupiter class light cruiser there. Destroyers are going to charge in. They'll probably get murdered, but they'll at least take the pressure off my uh, armored cruisers a bit. They're getting in there. All right, the lead, never mind. The lead one's sinking. Yes, we hit an enemy armored cruiser with a torpedo. Hit another enemy armored cruiser with a torpedo. We, ha we are probably going to lose all five destroyers here, but if we can sink the enemy armored cruisers, that's well worth it. And so three destroyers are sinking. We will slow the light cruisers down and turn them away. Hopefully they can take out some of the enemy destroyers. All right, so I think that entire flotilla of destroyers is sinking, but they've put two torpedoes into, I think, two different enemy armored cruisers. So now the goal is to bring these guys. Hopefully the, the torpedoes slow them down. Euro was hit by a torpedo. I think the Euro is already sinking, so I'm not too worried about that. So max revolutions on our armored cruisers so they can close the distance, hopefully. Max revolutions on the light cruisers, which are now effectively my screen. Or this one light cruiser. Let's see what the enemy does. All right, this stair is definitely going slow. I think I just ordered one of my light cruisers to uh, pick up survivors. So I didn't really see what I clicked. All right. So this light cruiser, the dog hill, is closing in the stair. I'm not sure if that's in torpedo range or not. She's taking quite a bit of damage, actually. I would rather would not lose the light cruiser. Um, What's it say the range is? 7,600 yards? Oh, wow. That's still kind of... Along. Is it the stair she's shooting at? No, she's shooting at the light cruisers. That's strange. The spawns over here. All right. We're cutting behind the stair that should... We should be able to sink her. She might already be in the process of sinking. She's not making much speed. I don't think I'm going to get both those enemy light cruisers, though, or armored cruisers. Probably just the one. Still, one armored cruiser for five destroyers would definitely be considered a win in this game. Eritrea, turn away. Why are you sailing straight for the enemy? I'm telling you to turn away. Well, can you go attack the this armored cruiser down here then? Maybe the Ros the Rosaria or Rosaira can do that too. All right, Star is dead in the water. I'm assuming that means sinking. Can I take command of this guy? Let's go ahead and send this destroyer in for what would presumably be a final shot at her. We'll turn the armored cruiser south. enemy is maybe slightly faster than me or not. All right, 
I don't think they're going to waste torpedoes on an enemy ship that seems to be sinking. So we'll continue to chase these guys. There's also some light cruisers off here to the left. Whatever happened to that coastal force? What are they, grushing me? They're like, oh, the sound of the guns? Hell no, we're not sailing toward that. All right, how are my armored cruisers doing here? Lead is fine. Second is okay, not too much flooding. I don't know if I'll be able to catch them. In theory, I would have thought the torpedo, I think that went to the stair up there, but maybe it went into the one that we already think is sinking. Also, stern chases take a good long while. And the Russian armored cruiser is not fast enough to keep up. Remember, these are not like machine-injected boilers. These are men in dank, dirty coal bunkers shelling or, you know, shoveling coal into the into the furnace here. So it is not a pleasant, pleasant or super sustainable thing. Oh, nice. So there, there, there's the other armored cruisers under AI control. They've headed off the enemy retreat. The enemy's turning away. Now we're able to get our full broadside in on these stairs. They're turning in. Nice. So they're going to close in on these guys and throw this whole enemy formation into uh, chaos, hopefully. All right. Cab cabinry, or however you pronounce that, please fire some torpedoes. Doesn't look like they are, but now we've got a, a line of battle that includes five armored cruisers now that these other, that the Russian has come up. My light cruiser there, Atria, might be sinking, or maybe just really heavy engine damage. All right, this stair seems to be... Oh, I thought it was dead in the water. Minerva's hit by a torpedo. Hell yes. Also, there was one that was shot kind of in the direction of my armored cruisers. A little bit worrying. Don't want to run into that by accident. All right, Minerva's veering to the north. The other stair is hanging out here in the south. I'm surprised the enemy destroyers didn't, like, try to race in amongst us and do some damage. Also, it looks like the AI unit has some destroyers giving it a screening there, so that's good. But I'm kind of surprised the Usoki class destroyers didn't... Are these really Austrian? It sounds like a Japanese name. Certainly doesn't sound Austrian. Um, what was, I don't even remember. All right, so we're losing another destroyer. That's fine. Yeah, I'm just kind of surprised that the enemy destroyers didn't try and, like, get in amongst us launching a torpedo attack or anything. All right, let's see if I can finish off these two armored cruisers. Stare looks like she's coming to a stop. Minerva's obviously badly damaged as well. Eritrea, is this... Please tell me it's just engine damage. Probably engine damage. That looks like a, a manageable flotation amount. Marco Polo and the AI have a good formation over here. Nice! Minerva's hit by another torpedo by the Pontier and sunk. Looks like two torpedoes hit her, and she blew up. Instantly sunk. So now we're just going to turn south and finish off the stair, and the enemy will go from what they had, I think it was eight armored cruisers, to five. That'll be a pretty, pretty bad day for their navy. Again, we lost quite a few destroyers, but not too worried about that. 
we can build more destroyers. Also, it'll give us a big victory point boost, which should, hopefully, end things. Or get close to ending things in the war. I don't even think she's returning fire anymore. Let's see if we can go get some of these ar these light cruisers. They only have three of them left in their navy. All right, so the er Eritrea fired a, a torpedo at the enemy and s and hit the stair again. So she's probably she's already dead in the water. I'm assuming that torpedo will finish her off, and she will sink. Let's kick this up to normal and see if we can catch these light cruisers. I don't know that we have the speed to do that. We might have a slight advantage on them, but after all the battle damage, I don't know that we'll be able to catch them. Marco Polo might be able to head them off, though. They don't really have any anywhere they can escape to. they got to get back into the Adriatic. And if the AI heads them off, there's a chance that we could cripple their light cruiser fleet too although we don't have infinite ammo all right the spawn on the jupiter yep the ai armored cruisers is going for them the jupiter might sneak past but i think the spawn oh, maybe not maybe she's gonna turn away i think the spawn's in trouble i can't control those destroyers they're ai destroyers perhaps they'll move them in for a Torpedo run. The Romeo is falling behind, but it doesn't look like flotation is a concern. She's taking a little bit of flotation damage, but not too much. I think it's just engine damage. Enemy destroyers are... Oh, those are more enemy ships. If those are battleships, we gotta get out of here. It looks like more of their fleet may have shown up. The good news is we're really close to Taranto, so... But it looks like their battle fleet may have uh, come to try and save the day. Hopefully the AI isn't stupid and doesn't charge them. Hey, Rosario, don't sail toward the enemy battleships. I know you're Russian and you're brave and all, but don't be dumb. Please, thank you. Marco Polo also, same. You guys don't we could turn a real great victory into something not so great so let's not do that meanwhile let's try and finish off the spawn up here and they damaged the vet vetter somewhat because she pulled out a line must have been an engine damage because she's not a rudder I guess maybe Because she seems to be going in circles. Uh, I don't see anything about the rudder. Oh, rudder damaged. Okay. Are they really? All right, so the enemy, those are destroyers. Where'd the enemy battle fleet go? Did they pull off to the right here? Okay. I think maybe we sank a destroyer too. I thought I saw something picking survivors. I don't know if it was from one of the armored cruisers or the destroyers. Sink the damn spawn. Why can't you hit the damn thing? Yep, we sank some other destroyers. That's good. Various ships are falling out of sight. Looks like our other armored cruiser force must have engaged and ripped apart those enemy destroyers. I think the lead enemy light cruiser will get away, but the spawn should be dead. We 
guys. Don't get too close. Nothing too predictable. Don't get yourself torpedoed. All right, let's get into Toronto. I guess the enemy battle fleet hauled off rather than engage a force, which at least from a gunnery perspective, they would have been vastly superior to. But I'm assuming the spawn is sinking here, and so I don't need to finish her off. I guess that could be a tactic for the AI. You'd be like, yeah, we're going to play dead. But it sure looks like they're dead. Oh, my God. The Marco Polo is engaging the Ersta Carl. Uh... Yeah, so bigger issue is the armor. You're not going to penetrate that armored belt. Good thing is it is an old, old dreadnought, pre-dreadnought class from like the 1890s. So its fire control is probably garbage. So as long as you don't get too close, shouldn't be too risky. Yeah, they've got a flotilla of destroyers and then at least one battleship. I don't know if the Marco Polo is just swatting them from a distance, being like, hey, you can't hit me, you can't hit me. If I had more light forces, I'd be tempted to run in and try and sink them with torpedoes. But I think we're just going to take the W and get out of here. Certainly a lot of shooting by those AI forces outside of my control. But I'm not worried about that. Oh, no. Commander Parnona misjudges maneuver while entering port in the darkness and runs the light cruiser aground. God damn it. Hopefully he didn't sink it and it could be refloated. All right. So we lost five destroyers. It looks like the light cruiser was heavily damaged, but not sunk. So five destroyers sunk, one light cruiser heavily damaged. The enemy lost three armored cruisers, one light cruiser, and one destroyer sunk. Another destroyer badly damaged. That is a decisive victory for us. 2,900 victory points. Somehow the enemy got 734. They didn't even sink any of our big ships, but major victory for us nonetheless. The enemy has sounded us out about a negotiated peace with us gaining disputed border areas and some other colonies. The Prime Minister wants to know your opinion. Uh, we should not let them off cheaply. We should press for hard terms. These sound like a good basis for peace negotiations. I'm worried that some of the border areas and maybe some of their colonies won't be valuable enough to give us Dalmatia. So we're going to say push for harsh terms. Doesn't mean we should crush them completely, but at least don't let them off cheaply. No common ground found during negotiations. And we are now blockading the enemy. Nice. Okay, so the enemy is blockaded. If we take a look here, they still have 10 battleships to our seven, but again, depending on how many of the Russians are deploying, 27. Uh, the Russians have deployed three to the Mediterranean, so it's a 10 battleship to 10 battleship front. And then the other stuff is dramatic. It's, you know, we've got three armored cruisers in the Med. They have three, but the Russians have deployed one. Some of those three for us, we should have more, but some of ours are repairing for the next month or two. That'll number will be higher next month. Um Light cruisers, the, they have just, they don't even have any in the med. I guess the other one is being repaired after that last battle. Yeah. So, anyway. Ships under construction. Okay, that's fine. Monthly balance is up to 1,000, so we can probably resume one of these guys, at least for a month. Or we can halt and then do a bunch. Meh. Um, submarines will free up a little bit of cash when they complete in eight months. I'm definitely overbuilding. The Coyote Dulios we're going to scrap after the war. 
Uh, dockyard size up to 21,000 tons. Let's just expand it. Let's start that now. I know we're at war, but like plan for the peace, plan for the eventual dreadnought, because I think we unlocked the wing turrets. All right, convoy defense southeast of Toronto. The enemy's probably going to raid us with some destroyers and stuff. Wow, we've got battleships. Maybe it'll be a battleship fleet battle. All right, where's the convoy? So we've got a bunch of cruisers. Is the convoy over here? The enemy obviously wants to sink our convoy. I'm not sure where they are. Unknown ship spotted All right, to the south. Let's do this. Light cruisers, get up to squadron maximum. Battleships, max minus, uh, get to 16 knots. These are the THGs, which are older and can't make as much headway. Oh, we got the Kyos and the THGs. They're our older battleships. They're not very good, or at least in terms of speed. I think we've refitted them to be able to function from a fire control perspective. All right, let's go see what the enemy has out here. I'm assuming they're, yep, they are the enemy. At least they're turning blue, which tells me they're the enemy. Are they going to send battleships out to raid a convoy? Because that's going to be amusing if that's what they're doing. All right. So they, they have three armored cruisers left. That's right. Some of these have to be battleships, though. They don't, unless that's, yeah, there they are, battleships. Okay, let's pause. Gunfire. Pause. All right. So we've got destroyers out front of the Comet class. They've got a THG class battleship because one was captured by them at the one of the wars previous. And then three Ertz to Carl class battleships and a Zinni class. The Zinni 410 incher. She's a small one. She's newer, but she's small. The Erstas are what we saw last turn. 18 knots, 11,000 tons. Older, but Pretty damn well armored. I think it would take a, a torpedo to sink. And then you've got the THGs. We've got the armored cruiser Castellinos. Oh, God. She's already taken a battleship hit, apparently. All right. How about you leave? Because that's pretty bad damage after just one hit. And the Romeo from the previous battle... And hopefully our other battleships will come down here and get in the fight because we're really spread out. All right, the light cruisers have come down. I'm going to set up a screen here. Battleships are coming down. Hey, light cruisers, turn. I don't know why the light cruisers aren't turning. Romeo just passed the enemy battle line and is getting straddled two heavy shell hits from the Romeo. Their battleships are, are aiming pretty well. I don't like that it's flotation damage on the Palestreo class armored cruiser, which is why I'm... telling them to do what they're doing. Do we order the destroyers to charge in on the battleships? Or is it too early? I feel like it's too early. We should bring these battleships down first. We've got five battleships. They'll have four. So their battleships are probably faster than mine, too. They're making 15 knots. Basically the speed I'm coming down at. straddling my light cruisers here which certainly can't take the damage that the Romeo can they're still focusing heavily the Romeo's taking three large caliber shell hits she's in trouble get out of there man those gunners on their battleships are pretty damn accurate they must have refitted these guys to get better tech better fire control or something We're gonna do this. I don't really love this idea, but they're they're sh they're shelling my. Hmm. 
destroyers anyway, so let's get them back in there and charge. At least some of them. I guess it's just the one. So, I'm Peristio, or however you pronounce that, is, is going to be a goner. Making a death ride. And she's going down. Didn't even get in torpedo range. All right. How's the, uh, hey, you guys, I didn't want you to retreat with the Romeo. I want you to come back down here. I'm going to need you. Wish there was a just like, hey, return to base type order. In theory, that's what the detach button's supposed to do, but. Why are these guys switching to AI control? I don't want you to. Hey, my battleships just can't get closed. I can't get close enough to get them decisively in the fight. They're targeting my light cruiser here. All right, they're turning back toward my battleships now. Let's see if we can get these destroyers off ahead of them. Basilica, pull back. You seem to be bidding, getting shattered too. Two medium hits. I don't know why these light cruisers will not respond to my orders. It's very frustrating. There we go. Not that I want to be approaching these guys on the stern as we take more damage that way, but looks like that's what we're doing. One torpedo into the line. Didn't hit. Lead destroyer sinking. Another torpedo into the line. Didn't hit. Well, that's lame. We got at least two torpedoes fired into the battle line that did nothing in exchange for all those destroyers. I could very well lose this battle. Silica doesn't... Can she really not make 22 knots? No, she, I guess she repaired her engines. Why is the Romeo... I hope you're sailing. You're still not... Are you sailing away? I can't tell. Alright, both those destroyers are sinking. The enemy could just retreat now for the victory. I don't actually know where the convoy is that we're defending. Trying to chase these guys, but they're escaping. My destroyers charged and died for nothing. Okay. Um. I don't know if they're up here near the other coast.
Maybe we can destroy some of their destroyers with our light cruiser. She's trying. She's firing off all her ammo. Now she got one of them by the looks of it. Maybe a second. Eh, maybe not. This might have been a flick on my uh, on my screen here. She got a second though. Ah, she's out of main ammo. So we sank at least two enemy destroyers, I think. Our battleships are chasing. We're trying to catch up. Nightfall has come. So we're sailing in the same direction as the enemy. Maybe they'll slow down or turn back or something. Allow us to engage them. Whoa, we just closed in with something here. Let's slow down. I'm guessing it might be a destroyer. I'm a little nervous that we're going to get torpedoed in the dark. It's dead in the water, though, so. It must be. Yeah, it's one of the sunken destroyers. North, northeast. We're getting radio, like, SIGINT reports, I guess, about them, but unless they turn around, we're not going to catch them. Not sure where they're trying to go. If they're just trying to retreat, then they're they're going to get out of here. So this will definitely be a victory, I think, for the enemy. Maybe not. I mean, they didn't sink any of our convoys, so I don't know what the... But in terms of ship losses, certainly. Claims we win. So the enemy loses three destroyers. We lose four and a corvette. But none of our auxiliaries or convoy ships were sunk, and so that gives us points, I guess. Um, so sink six transports failed. Points for survivors picked up zero. Ship loss differential 6,000. Aircraft lost zero. So 21,000 to 10,000. Okay. Four destroyers lost to three, though. To me, that's a, that's a defeat, but I'll, I'll take it. So, minor victory, but a victory nonetheless. Our new destroyers have finished working up. There's the British. I wonder if does this have cross-firing? But I'm assuming the Herculeus here is their, their first Dreadnought-class battleship. 19,000 tons, 19 knots, 8 12-inch guns, 14 6-inch guns, with just shy of a 10-inch belt battery of armor. Pretty decent ship, I guess. Certainly not something I'd want to go up against. They have cross deck firing that makes it even worse, um, but if it's not, if it's just wing turrets, then it's it's not dramatically more powerful than on a broadside than a pre dreadnought. All right, torpedoes range increases. An indecisive engagement has taken place between the Austrian and Russian navies in West Africa. Okay, what do the Austrians have in West Africa? All right, so Austrian merchant sinks two of our, or Austrian, whatever, cruiser sinks two of our merchants. Russians add victory points. So 14,000 to 6,000, that lead is getting bigger. Hell yeah, brother. All right, let's go one more day or turn, I guess. Uh, is our economy just getting better? It seems like our monthly balance keeps going up. We're not completing any construction here, so I'm not sure why that would be the case. You have 12 ships on trade protection, but 13 are required. Continue anyway. No. All right. So we need more ships on trade protection. So we'll add a destroyer. We'll add one of our older destroyers. Some of them are already there. So all my old stuff goes to trade protection pretty much. 
All right, we still have them blockaded. They have 37 destroyers. We have 17. I need to build more. Maybe because we're working up some of our ships. That's why we don't. That's why our economy got a little better. All right, let's just build another one of our uh, monolith class 500 ton destroyers. I have a little bit of surplus, so I can afford two without going into the red. They're going to cost nine months to build, but we're losing them so fast. Uh, let's build seven. I can't afford seven all at once, but I'm going to pause one of my armored cruisers so we can keep the... Uh, I can afford way more destroyers if I pause the armored cruiser, but we'll pause the armored cruiser for now. Or actually, let's just resume it for now. We can do this for one month. All right. One more battle today. It's a fast one. Oh, the Austrian Navy declines. 800 victory points. Thank you. Convoy defense off Sardinia. I'll decline that. We'll decline that too. How, well, do I have to keep, do I have to eventually accept a fleet battle? Okay, I'll accept that. Well, shoot, maybe that should be part of uh, a different video. Looks like we've got two Kyodulios, both of them, three THGs, and then two of our newer Roma class battleships in this fleet action. We've got four armored cruisers, the Goito of the Romeo class, the Vetter of the Romer class, the Francisco of the Romeo class, and then the Castafardio of the Palaistro class. Then we've got the Marco Polo and the Amerigo Vespucci of the Palaistro class down here. And a lot of destroyers, but the enemy may mob us with destroyers. We will see. That being said... We've already been going for 47 minutes, so I think what we will do is we will fight. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing this up like it's going to be the decisive battle of the war, but a uh, very good chance they run away, and it's not. Uh, with that being said, we are going to see what happens next turn or next episode. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is Rule the Waves 3, our Let's Play series playing as Italy at war with Austria-Hungary. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.